I am Siobhan Sarna here with Sinclair Keneally. Hello, Sinclair. Hi, thanks for Hi. having me. Oh my gosh, I'm glad you're here. You know, I look forward to this event whenever we can do it. And I know it's the last time you're doing it this year. Um, so I'm really glad we were in on it. And we're going to be talking about how to reset your liver and the hormone toxin matrix that is also part of bile sludge and stones. And if you're saying there, well, I had that, I, I don't have a gallbladder anymore. You're still in the right place. Absolutely. Um, Sinclair has helped tens of thousands of people with these issues. She has her own personal story. She'll be sharing with you. She's helped me personally. I've paid to have Sinclair work on my case. And seriously, I was in a very low spot at the time. And she really, really helped me. I mean, I was showing up I will say, this is not a pretty term, but I was dragging ass. Man, it was, it was not pretty. And now Sinclair, aren't I like a different person? <laughs> yeah, you really are. It's been I so really fun to watch you blossom. <laughs> Thank you. It was just a low point for me. And um, I had some stuff that I hadn't cleaned up from my mold. And um, Sinclair really, really helped me. And also what I appreciate about her work is it's very gentle and loving, but extremely thorough and effective. And for those of you who are like, lead follower, get out of my way. I want to do it as fast as possible. My drainage amunctories are clear. I am ready to go. Cool. She's got you covered. But if you're like, I'm sensitive to everything and I'm not kidding, she has you covered there too. Oh, by the way, you in the sweet spot. Sometimes I'm sensitive. Sometimes I'm not. We got you covered there too. All right, Sinclair, mm -hmm. take it away. It's great to have everybody here. Oh, please be nice or be gone is our major rule. And if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A box, not the chat. Please just let the chat be for tech issues. Again, not sure if I can help, but I'll try. Any links I need to put there and refrain from having side conversations out of respect for our brain fogged friends and Sinclair. All right, thank you. Yay, well, it's such a, uh, an honor to be here. You know, I love your community because you guys are so committed to your health. And I really appreciate your advocacy in the space just because we've got to take control over our own health and do it on our own terms, right? And that is totally possible. And it all starts with understanding our own anatomy and how our bodies really work. So I just want to make sure that you guys can see my slides. One moment, please, because I can't talk and chew gum at the same time. All good. Okay. Let's see. So I want to make sure I zoom in as much as possible. How's that look? All good? Looks good. It looks good. Does it look good to you all as a full screen? Let me know. Everybody's view on Zoom I've now determined is a little bit different unless you have the exact same settings. That's so true. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that you know that you're in the right place. Like Siobhan said, whether or not you still have a gallbladder, if you're trying to save yours and avoid... Um, you know, a surgery, which is totally reasonable. It's scary to have surgery and, you know, we want to keep our organs winning if we can, or if you've already been in a life-threatening situation, you've had to lose your gallbladder and you're one of the 40% of people that experience, um, you know, abdominal issues and digestion pain afterwards, you know, you're not alone. That's not uncommon you know, gallbladder removal surgery is not the end all be all. It doesn't fix our problems, but it, it can save your life if it has come to that point. So just want you to understand more about your gallbladder and its interrelationship between that and the liver and your thyroid and your other hormone um, factors in your systems so that you can really be in charge of your own journey. So this is for you. If you have chronic gut, skin, or energy issues and suspect that liver or gallbladder congestion is a factor, if you already know you have a gallbladder issue, if you have polyps, if you have stones, and like I said, if you've already lost your gallbladder but realized, oh, that didn't fix everything. So I just invite you to turn off all distractions and just be really present with me here right now because every time we do a training together, I consider this a sacred space because this is really about you getting empowered to take the next steps in your own journey and get more and more discerning about what is right for you. So let's do that. And like Siobhan said, I always take care of you guys because I love her so much. So there will be some fun things at the end just for you. If you don't know my story, um, I, I will just be really upfront with you. I am not perfect. I'm not the somebody who belongs on the cover of Health Magazine. I was chronically ill for decades and didn't understand it. And I had to end up in the hospital totally crashed 
mystery patient X, um, not easily diagnosable for this to finally get my full attention. And unfortunately, um, I wish I could tell you that it was like, oh, so easy. And the clouds parted and we had a haas and I got a diagnosis, but I didn't. Um, all the scans and all the tests came back inconclusive, the MRIs, nobody knew what was going on with me. I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought it was dying. I could no longer tolerate food. I couldn't stand up. And, um, when I walked out of that hospital, I thought I was going home to die. And I wish somebody had told me early on, have you looked into your liver and your gallbladder health? Because that didn't come, that realization didn't come for many, many years, unfortunately, after that. And as soon as I started working on my liver, yes, I had all these diagnoses and misdiagnoses along the way, but as soon as I started directly tackling my own liver and gallbladder health, that's the rate at which I got better, was me directly going after this stuff. And the thing about liver and gallbladder issues is they cannot be medicated away. It's a really important thing to understand. When your liver and your gallbladder become overloaded or blocked, there isn't a prescription that you can go on to resolve that. We actually have to be much more strategic and systematic about resolving that and reclaiming our efficiency in this critical detox pathway. So now that we figured this out the hard way for me, and after I painlessly released over 15,000 gallstones from my liver and gallbladder without ever drinking the olive oil or doing that stuff, um, I share this information with you. And now I've taken over 10,000 students through this proven system. So I'm talking from experience. I want you to know that I was extremely um, ill and very debilitated by it. And now I'm symptom free. And I'm not perfect. I'm a giant wuss, honestly. Like I would look at a pill bottle and become nauseous. So I know that if I can do it, you can do it. I'm just sharing that. Um, one of the things that really uh, you need to understand before us to like jump right into this piece is to really get familiar with your own anatomy. So if you put your right hand on your lower ribs, that's where your liver is. It's the upper right quadrant of your abdomen, right? Um, your lower ribs right there. And the liver is huge. It's the largest traditional organ you have. And 13% of your total body blood supply is in your liver at any given time getting processed. And your liver itself is doing over 500 jobs for you. So it's not just about detoxification. It's also about hormone balancing and processing, digesting your proteins, your fats, processing your sugars. And so if any part of your liver gets overloaded, not only are you going to start seeing distress in those systems, in your endocrine system, in your digestive system, in your the rate at which you age, in your metabolism, in your food sensitivities, in your energy, but you're also going to get referral stress to your gallbladder because as goes the liver, so goes the gallbladder. Your gallbladder's job is to hold the bile that your liver makes for you. Now your liver is making bile, and that's a gross word, but it's actually a really magical substance. Um, it's basically like your body's liquid gold detergent. It, I say that because it's expensive to make and your body likes to recycle it over and over again, recycle your bile salts. Uh, over 95% of your bile salts are recycled after one use. That's important to understand because as your liver makes your bile salts from your cholesterol and your amino acids, then your liver is going to use that in these 2,000 miles worth of bile ducts. This biliary tree right here is actually really simplified in this drawing. It's actually 2,000 miles worth of very, very delicate bile ducts. And as your bile flushes down, your liver is adding toxins as it detoxifies your red blood cells, your blood, in, and then the, that bile gets st stored in your gallbladder from there. Why does it get stored? Because your gallbladder needs time to adjust the pH of your bile to be in perfect harmony with the stomach acid that's coming out of your stomach with the bolus of food and landing in your small intestine right there. And it needs to be able to release that in perfect harmony. That timing is crucial because think about it. Your stomach acid is extremely corrosive. That's its job. You're supposed to be at a pH of two when you're breaking down your food. Well, that's a, that's like hundreds of times more acidic than what your small intestine would prefer. So as 
The stomach acid enters the small intestine with your food as it's being digested and switching over into small intestine mode. Yeah, your pancreas right here is dumping in pancreatic enzymes and sodium bicarbonate, and that's helping with alkalizing, but not as much as you think. Your bile actually is required to dump out right at that perfect timing through this little trap door, which is called the sphincter of Odi. Such a weird word, right? It just means gallbladder trap door. And then it's going to join that stomach acid right here so it doesn't burn through your small intestine. So your gallbladder is always talking to your, to your stomach up here. How are you doing? How acidic are you? Okay, how's that digestion going? I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to release. Tell me when. Tell me when. Okay, here I come. I'm flushing out this bile. It's condensed to just the right amount, just the right pH to match you. And if anything goes wrong, any stress that happens in the liver or any congestion that happens in the gallbladder, that delicate dance starts to get compromised. That's a really big deal because we're going to come back to the sphincter of Odi, this little trap door over and over and over again. I'm not going to quiz you on it, but I'm going to show you just how important it is for you and actually how your hormones play a role in this. And so do toxins. It's really weird how interrelated all this stuff is, but it actually changes the whole way you think about your digestion and your gallbladder and your liver health once you realize it. In order to do that, I just want to ground you in your own experience right now. Like, why does this matter to you? Well, let's consider what symptoms of gall congestion you already have. And let's start connecting the dots. Gall just means bile, by the way. So when we say gall congestion, we mean bile congestion. You might be experiencing heartburn or nausea, right? Like Or GERD or acid reflux. I had GERD so bad. If I tilted my head down in the morning for the first few hours of the day, I would get bile and acid in my mouth. It was really bad. Um, and that's because that stomach acid bile dance has become dysregulated. And we'll talk about that more in depth later. Skin blemishes. Why would that be? Because if your liver can't keep up with this job and if your bile becomes congested because it's not flowing fast enough because there's too many toxins and the balance of hormones is off, then your skin is going to try to start acting as a second liver. That's why you're seeing that overflow of distress. It could just be skin blemishes occasionally, or it could be more severe, like adult acne, which is super embarrassing, right? Or even psoriasis or eczema. I just want to like, wow, the skin acting as your second liver, like that is a bullet point right there. That I mean, that's really, sorry, that just really got me when you said that. Because I think we are just like uh, totally disconnecting our skin and the rest of the body. And as I always say, if we had cellophane wrappers instead of skin, everyone would have beautiful organs. We'd never let there be like back up. And sorry, anyway, the skin. Is I just beautiful. love that visual because yeah, then we would <laughs> think about it like the glass bottom boat. Like, can I just see what's going on? in here, please. That would be so helpful. Then I would know that I had had fatty liver disease, you know, long before I actually started experiencing severe symptoms because of it. That would have been super helpful. All right. So you may be one of those people that's experiencing the skin overflow. And that's actually really common. You might see dark circles under the eyes. You might see those 11s that everybody's so terrified of on your forehead, you know, because that's not just because you're frowning. This is actually in traditional Chinese medicine. This is the part of the map of the face that's expressing liver distress. If you feel like your skin is aging and fast forward, if you're like, how come I look older than my sister, but she's two years older than me? What's going on there? You know, that could be a part of it. Um, gas and bloating, indigestion. Why would that be? Because your bile flow, let's go back to your visual here for you. Your bile flow coming out of your gallbladder into your small intestine is crucial to support that migrating motor complex. Your bile is telling the small intestine, let's keep that migrating motor complex going. Let's keep move, food moving along at a nice, healthy rate. Let's emulsify the fats because I'm here to help break those down so the lymphatic system can absorb those correctly and efficiently through the small intestine lining. 
right? All of that is happening because bile is flowing with ease. And when it's not, that's when we start seeing the gas, the bloating and the indigestion. And absolutely this could be a contributing factor for SIBO and SIFO, just as a side note. So what happens from there? Well, think about it. Lower down, you would experience constipation and or diarrhea because bile isn't flowing with ease. Diarrhea can often just be an overcompensation for uh, this underlying constipation. Your body's like, I just can't get stuff out that I need to. I'm just going to go into overdrive and get anything out. And then you get that lovely waterfall diarrhea experience. You also might be experiencing slow metabolism. Why would that be? Well, that tummy tire is not just about cortisol. That's not just a cortisol belly. In fact, your cortisol might be off because your liver and gallbladder are overloaded and they can't do this delicate dance efficiently anymore. It's not just about life stress, although that is certainly not helpful because when you're under prolonged life stress, guess what happens? The oxygenation to your liver can be reduced down to as little as 10%. Because your your body, your nervous system is literally telling your body, hey, let's not detox right now. I'm under stress. I need to be able to fight or flight. That's my job right now. We'll get back to detox in a bit, right? After we've dealt with the saber tooth tiger in the room. But if you're always under stress, the way I was, I went through many years of extreme stress, you know, family, career stress, it was a lot then of course, it's going to be harder for us to keep up with this body burden. So slow metabolism, it makes sense because your liver's job is to actually set your metabolic rate. That's not just your thyroid's job. Your liver is actually playing an even bigger role, it could be argued, in setting your metabolism. PMS, menstrual issues, perimenopause or menopause stress, um, endometriosis, PCOS, fibroids, difficult periods, all of these can be attributed to um, liver overload and your gallbladder not being efficient enough. And that's why you often see early gallbladder removal and reproductive system distress going hand in hand in the generations we have today. That can be as young as 40 or even younger, um, especially if you've been exposed to certain toxins like mold or heavy metals. So where else do we see these um, stressors show up if your gallbladder can't keep up? Um, you actually, you'll see it emotionally in irritability, quick to anger, easily overwhelmed, um, either an indecisiveness, that's very common, um, or uh, like a total control freak thing because you feel angry and you feel overloaded all the time, but you've been taught that it's not okay to express or feel anger. Um, so you actually turn that into control issues because that's much more socially acceptable. So we see that a lot, actually. I can spot a livery person in a restaurant, like I can clock them across the room because of the way they're talking to the waiter, because of how easily overwhelmed or confused they are, how overloaded they are with sound, with light, and how quick they go into irritation or frustration. Um, and that used to be me. Like I used to be standing in a coffee shop line. And if there were two people ahead of me, I was mentally like yelling at them for taking so long. I was yelling at the barista in my mind for being so slow. And it was really just, I didn't have the energy and the stamina to stand there. And I needed help in my liver and gallbladder. So if that's you, just give yourself grace. You don't want to be like that. And that's not the best of who you are. And guess what? My favorite thing about teaching this stuff is watching you get back to who you really are, your own emotional resilience. And that is totally possible. And it is not too late. Just so you know, people who come in super angry, overwhelmed, herky jerky, brain foggy into rapid liver reset on the other side of it, they get back to their sweetheart selves. They're generous, they're funny, they're loving, they're appreciative, and they can handle life's stressors once more. So another couple of things that we want to make sure that we're connecting the dots to here for gall congestion, um, food sensitivities and histamine sensitivities. So what is histamine sensitivity? It's not just runny eyes, right? Or runny nose or itchiness the way, you know, our commercials have taught us. It could be skin flushing when you eat. It could be fatigue or overwhelm when you eat. It could be nausea easily, you know, um, due to foods or stressors. Like that could be like what you jump to. 
And it could just be um, because your liver is overloaded. Um, your liver plays a huge role in histamine processing. Histamine is not a bad thing. We want it. We need it to stay alive. We're just talking about histamine overload, which is so common in today's day and age. So it's not just about allergies. We've got to get out of the allergy paradigm because you can actually peel back reduce the sense of the intensity of allergies and peel back intolerances completely if you properly deal with your liver. Okay, so difficulty digesting fats, duh, that's how most of us find out that we have a gallbladder issue, right? Is that we have trouble digesting heavy, rich, or fatty meals or trouble digesting or processing alcohol, right? And so we get told, oh, avoid fats, avoid alcohol, but you really can't avoid fats and be healthy and have a healthy brain or even have healthy bones because fats are the ones that carry our fat soluble vitamins, like vitamins A, D, E, K. Like this is an essential source of nutrition for healthy bones and healthy teeth. And of course, healthy glands and healthy brain. So we don't want to be scared of fats. We just want to be really smart about which fats we are ingesting as we work on our gallbladder health, if you still have one, or you're going to focus completely on your liver if you don't anymore. Um, compromised immune system, that makes sense because if your bile isn't flowing with ease, your liver can't play the role it needs to in supporting your immune system. Uh, obviously, gallbladder pain, that makes sense. But many of us actually struggle for years with gallbladder issues before getting those scary gallbladder attacks. In the beginning, those gallbladder attacks can be just like a slight pinging. It's very localized up under those lower ribs, right? So you might have swelling and achiness all through those lower um, ribs in the upper right quadrant of your torso or your abdomen. Um, but and that would be more like a liver issue. But if you have very localized pinging, that's your gallbladder talking. If you've had too much to drink, or if you've had a heavy meal, or if you had more dairy than usual, or if you have, a, you know, eat a lot of eggs out of nowhere or onions or pork, Eggs, onions, and pork can be very hard on the gallbladder, unfortunately. Um, so that can develop later on into very scary gallbladder attacks, right? And many of you have maybe have even ended up in the ER with one of those. And so many of my clients who have been through multiple childbirths and been through gallbladder attacks can say that the pain is worse than childbirth because it's so scary, right? So it makes sense if you ended up in the ER and you got talked into gallbladder removal, you may have been at a point where medically that was the right move for you that day, but there were all these signs up until then. So we just want to acknowledge that, right? And high blood sugar, we're going to talk about why that is and the hormone insulin and how that plays together um, so intimately with your bile. So you're, by now you're getting the picture. The gallbladder is super crucial. It's not just a catcher's mitt or a purse to hold your bile for your liver until it's time to use it. Um, yes, you can survive without it, but you want to understand what you've lost if you are going to lose it because you'll lose that con condensation of bile for that effective use in digestion. You'll lose that ability to adjust pH for bile as needed. You'll lose that ability to send bile efficiently through as you're digesting to break down fats and proteins so your digestive enzymes can go to work, right? And that means that your vitamin absorption may be compromised, so it makes sense that we would need to tackle this head on. This is one of those really crucial issues where the problem does not get smaller if you ignore it and you cannot medicate this away, okay? So <laughs> I should have warned you, but I am gonna show you some student releases today. These are gallstones and they do come in many different colors, which is fun um, because it's all about what your liver is has in excess on hand, like the upper left ones. This is an excess of bilirubin. Your liver's having a hard time keeping up and there's too much bilirubin laying around. And so your bilirubin ends up in the stones themselves. And these could be in your liver for sure. And they can also just be in your gallbladder. And you can see this is a very typical student release from us in Rapid Liver Reset where you can see some stones appear smoother and smaller and they might be younger. They might be very recently formed. And some of them are clearly much older. They've kind of calcified and they're you know getting strange. Those are the ones with high mineral content that are much more likely to show up on scans, ultrasounds, you know, x-rays where you're looking at, you know, imaging of your liver and gallbladder. And you might even see a few of these be dense enough to pick up on those scans. I just want you to know the majority of these are not gonna show up on scans yet. 
I think that within the next couple of years, we're going to have much better imaging commercially available to us. And I'll be the first one to tell you, yay, you can finally see more of your stones on these scans. It's worth it to go in and get one regularly, but we're not there yet. That's okay. Um, the thing that I want you to realize is this stuff can come out and it can come out painlessly. Stones, gallstones are not like kidney stones. They do not have to be painful to release. And if you do the proper preparation work, you can save your gallbladder or you can help your liver recover if you don't have a gallbladder anymore. And that just because you've removed your gallbladder doesn't mean you don't have these in your liver. Remember, I got out over 15,000 of these. And yes, many of them were quite small, right? And those are easy for your body to release. But you, for these other bigger ones, it's better to have stone dissolving protocols on board, preparation for drainage, empowering your body to release. So you're not just going to like sit down and drink a jar of olive oil and pray. Like that's not a good idea in this day and age. That is not safe. And so many of you here may have already tried that route. And I really appreciate Andreas Moritz and Hulda Clark for their contribution to the natural health world and, you know, designing that protocol and popularizing it. And I just want to acknowledge that it doesn't fix the issue, right? It doesn't empower the body to release in a safe and deep way. So it's important to understand. And some of these students didn't have a gallbladder. These are all coming out of their liver, but there's a reason why they didn't have a gallbladder because their gallbladder was already um, consumed and overloaded um, with stones like these ones. So, and again, remember stones can come in all different colors. The ones on the left are actually the most common ones that we see. And that's just cholesterol wrapping around toxins. Your liver and your gallbladder are going to use that as a strategy because cholesterol is readily available. It's made in the liver. And remember your bile salts are made of cholesterol and amino acids, putting them together. So if you have irritating toxins that the liver just cannot flush out and the bile is getting more and more sluggish and your liver is starting to go, uh oh, I can't keep up. What am I going to do? Your liver and gallbladder's primary strategy for that is yes, of course, to keep trying to push bile out as normal, try to reoptimize that. But if it can't keep up, it's going to start turning um, those toxic, irritating elements into stones because your bile salts are suspended in liquid form with very delicate chemistry. What do I mean by that? I mean, bile salts are naturally solid and they're only put into liquid form temporarily in order to flush out toxins and get the bile salts into the small intestine. But if the bile salts, if your bile comes into contact with these industrial chemicals that we never evolve with, there's over 350,000 globally registered chemical and chemical combinations today, globally, over 350,000 different combinations. And almost all of those are less than a hundred years old. Like we are not like great that we're, our society is evolving, but our bodies can't evolve at the same rate. Your liver doesn't recognize those. It doesn't have detox enzyme chains for those. It, it literally cannot keep up. And so this is the end result. Um, and that's okay, um, actually, because this is still winnable. Just so you know, I never talk about topics that are not winnable. It's not my nature. And you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to be really hardy stock. You can be extremely sensitive and really depleted and still fix this if you are willing to face it head on. And it does not get smaller. It only gets bigger. So as soon as you're ready, I strongly recommend that you do. Okay, so you're starting to figure it out. Releases can look different. They can be small or large. You're already getting some of the lifestyle factors. We don't need to spend time on this. You're all grownups. You get it, right? We don't need to talk about alcohol consumption or smoking. Like, duh, that makes sense. We do get to acknowledge that we have been exposed to herbicides and pesticides, and that's at an unprecedented rate. Even if you eat all organic, you're still getting crop drift. You're still getting glyphosate sprayed on your grains as a desiccant instead of a growth agent, which means they can legally still call it organic. Isn't that crummy? So they're sneaking in and those are really hard on the liver. And by extension, of course, the gallbladder. What else is happening? Well, you're getting those synthetic personal care products. Same deal really hard on the bile, slowing it down, making it sticky, inviting stone formation. So are those rancid oils and processed foods. And of course, 
that mold I was talking about. And um, mold exposure is no joke. It's one of the fastest ways to overload the liver and the gallbladder. And it can be one of the main factors for why your gallbladder um, caused you to start getting so sensitive to certain foods um, that you ended up in the ER. So once you end up in the ER, what happens? Well, if you're here and that's already happened to you, you already know this punchline. Um, you know, most of us don't know that we have a gallbladder issue until it's too late. And then when we get it removed, um, which is the most common and most profitable surgery in the United States, um, 41% of people have their gallbladders removed have abdominal pain persist. That's a big deal. That's not a very good outcome for the surgery that's the most common and the most profitable in the United States. It's great if it saved your life that day, but it's more complicated than that, isn't it? And one in five people have complications with their gallbladder surgery. And of course, it doesn't actually solve liver distress, congestion, and digestive issues that will persist after the surgery. So this is kind of, I just invite you to consider like, where are you in your gallbladder stress stage journey? Because most of us um, actually get figured this out way too late. That's why I'm so excited that you're here today because you're ahead of the game. Most of us have this liver overload or sluggish liver bile ducts. Remember, we were looking at those earlier and it's silent. And then we get into stage two, silent congestion in the gallbladder because the liver is overflowing its stress into the gallbladder, more and more impacted. Most of us start cluing into this problem in stage three where symptoms are rising, fatigue, irritability, referral pain, digestion problems, food sensitivities, reproductive issues, yuck. And then um, it finally gets our full attention in stage four when we have gallbladder attacks for the first time, right? Some of us have to go through removal surgery in stage five to figure it out. And then of course, like we just said, for so many of us, symptoms persist for 41% of folks and those liver issues were never resolved. So I hope you're figuring this out in stage three, but it's not too late if you're in four, five, or six. Uh, we just have to understand that medical these physical blockages can't be medicated away. And there's a, an approach, there's a protocol for each one of you. So the one on the left here in this photo uh, is one of the proudest uh, photos I've ever gotten. This is from a client who had Lyme disease and mast cell activation syndrome. She was extremely sensitive. And this is the first stone she ever saw in the toilet. She was so proud of herself. She took a photo of it for me. We cried together. It was a whole thing. Um, <laughs> this is an example here in the middle of a more typical release of someone who's able to do the pulse flushes, which is what I did to get out those 15,000 stones. And then this one over here is literally like goose egg size. It's a big one. And I don't know if you can see in the resolution on Zoom, but this is actually a bunch of stones smushed together. This is definitely in the liver, not the gallbladder of this guy, because he got out like 15 of these in one deep flush, um, which was a big deal. Uh, because he could actually feel them dropping out of his liver like marbles, clunk, clunk, clunk. And it wasn't painful, it was just a little unnerving. He was a little nauseous, he was a little cranky. But the next day, he said he felt immediate relief in his unlovable skin symptoms and his energy issues. He actually released so much in that flesh that he had a divot in his body right over his liver. <laughs> Looked like he was a car bumper that had been dented. It was crazy. And it took several weeks for the liver to fill in. But it was one of the ways that we discovered he had an enlarged liver because um, he was able to take a, for, a, like a deep breath for the first time in his memory. And just getting those out. So it's a big deal. You know, you can, your body is so resilient and it can do so many amazing things. We just have to understand how it works and what it would like to be supported with, given the fact that you've been on the back foot for probably quite some time, right? So we need, in order to do that, we need to understand a little bit more about our bodies. I've already told you, bile acids are made from cholesterol. And after being synthesized in the liver, bile acids are combined with those amino acids, taurine and glycine to form those primary bile acids. And I hope you're already asking yourself, what about cholesterol, right? Because if you have cholesterol issues, I want you to know that bile flow regulates cholesterol. Because bile salts are made from cholesterol, bile flow plays a huge role in regulating cholesterol levels. 
80% of your body's cholesterol is actually used by the liver to produce bile salts, or it's supposed to be. So we need to consider that slow bile flow equals dysregulated cholesterol levels. And here's another issue. Uh, for those of you that have thyroid issues, that's not uncommon. In fact, it's entirely expected because there's a liver gallbladder thyroid axis that never gets talked about. Hypothyroidism is actually linked to sphincter of Odi dysfunction. Do you remember when I told you that weird word earlier? It's that little trap door at the bottom of the cute gallbladder here. And then it has this vine that leads down to the small intestine. It's that right there, that trap door. That's your sphincter of Odi. And if you have low levels of thyroxine, that absolutely correlates to reduced bile flow, reduced bile flow. That's a really big deal. And it's not the only hormone component. Um, so if you have excess estrogen, some estrogen is very protective to the liver, which is why when you go through menopause, you're actually at greater risk for liver disease and gallbladder issues because you don't have enough estrogen protecting the liver anymore. But too much estrogen causes the sphincter of Odi, that little trap door, to remain contracted, meaning it can't let go. It can't flush bile out efficiently, which compromises the gallbladder, right? So excess estrogen causes cholestasis and encourages stone formation. It's actually one of the fastest ways that you can create stone formation. Mold exposure creates stone formation. Uh, excess estrogen creates stone formation. And any factor that dysregulates cholesterol and slows down bile flow, like different toxin exposures, will encourage stone formation in the liver and in the gallbladder. And remember, your liver has 2,000 miles of bile ducts for those stones to form in. So it makes sense that as we design protocols for ourselves to empower the liver and gallbladder to let go and release and break up the sludge and stones, that we will want to do so um, thinking about it in, in those terms. Like we're going to empower the body to release in waves respecting the capacity that you have today. And that's different for everybody. So we'll talk about that more by the end. So we want to think this through. Estrogen and the role it leads to, so poor liver function can lead to excess estrogen buildup or excess estrogen can lead to gallbladder dysfunction. So it's this funky circular issue. And that includes xenoestrogens. What are xenoestrogens? Those are the industrial chemicals that are in your personal care products, they're also in your processed foods that act like estrogens. They mimic estrogens and they confuse the body. Wait, is this estrogen? Should we behave like this is estrogen And when it comes to ourselves? Oh, okay. And that's um, one of the fastest ways that you can invite cholestasis, which is sluggish bile. So they take a heavy toll on liver efficiency where they must be broken down into new metabolites for excretion, just like any other toxin, right? So those liver bile ducts become congested, further slowing down liver function and absolutely overloading the gallbladder. Now, I told you we talk about insulin, um, which is one of the biggest hormonal issues we have in this day and age. This is really important to understand. Improper, uh, proper bile release is crucial for balancing blood sugar. Bile acids serve as signaling molecules, right? So they actually help the body to regulate blood sugar. And if your bile flow is compromised for any reason at all, and your liver gets overloaded, your pancreas starts going, wait a minute, how come you're not dealing with my insulin efficiently? Should I make more? Should I get weird and dysregulated? I should probably do that, right? Because you're not keeping up with your sugar metabolism for me. Um, because did you know this? The liver has to process a lot of the body sugar intake. And it's one of the main reasons why we might have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But it also um, is the only part of the body that can uh, break down certain sugars. So this is really crucial to understand because if you overload the body with sugar in your diet at all, you could be overloading the liver because it's already dealing with all these other weird factors that disrupts insulin further. And then you have this funky circular issue where the pancreas thinks the liver isn't listening. The liver's overloading, can't keep up. The gallbladder starts getting more and more congested. The pancreas thinks the liver isn't listening. It gets more overloaded and you just can't stop this cycle until you go in and you actively break up the stagnation in the liver and gallbladder. If you still have one, how do you do that? right? That's the question. Well, you do that through 
really planned, intelligent releases. And this is a really typical, um, <laughs> typical release. And I know that this, this is a little gross. I realize that, but I want you to understand what you can expect and what is possible for you. I love this time, time-lapse photography. That's cool. <laughs> it's fun, right? This is a wonderful student. He's a Marine and um, quite young, and he was getting serious digestive issues and a lot of referral pain in his right shoulder, which is very typical of gallbladder issues. So if you've ever had referral pain in your right shoulder and you're like, why is this always getting tweaky or easily injured? It could actually be your gallbladder talking. And that's what was happening for him. He was getting more and more fat sensitive. He couldn't tolerate alcohol anymore. Could never have a beer with his friends. Um, and he's like 30 years old, like this poor guy had been through so much and served our country. And he was um, really, really struggling with his health due to the toxins that he had been exposed to on his tours of duty. So he tackled it head on, just like a Marine. He did our preparation for 30 days, and then he did the deep flush. And that very first release didn't look like much. It's like, oh, okay, that's really exciting. Stuff is coming out. There's proof in the toilet. Later that day, a few more. Oh, and then the next morning, which is super typical, by the way, hitting pay dirt, right? And then you can see the total catch for this particular deep flush. So- the preparation for the flush absolutely determines the quality of the flush. And depending on the size of your health issues, you may need to do several of these releases because the body likes to release in waves and then rest and then gear up for another release. And if we work with those instincts, everything becomes softer, gentler, safer, and also more effective for you, which is really nice. You also have to consider that, you know, in this picture, where there's stones, there's flukes, and where there's flukes, there's stones. So there's a parasitic component that you also get to flush out with the liver and gallbladder. And these will just volunteer in the toilet if you're doing this the right way, but you can also tackle them directly. This is not undigested food. These are actually really common species of a class of parasites known as trematodes. And the CDC says that these guys have a 25 to 30 year life cycle in your liver. They come in on your food. It's not a question of if you've been exposed to them, you have. The question is, are you a good host to them? And do they wanna set up shop and stay? If you are, meaning if you have stagnation, if you have stones forming, if you have any of those compromised immune factors, then yeah, they're gonna love you. They're gonna punch a hole in your small intestine lining. They're gonna swim to your liver, bury themselves in your liver and start clogging up your bile ducts, feeding on your cholesterol and your food and stealing your nutrients like iron. Some species of flukes even get darker and darker with age because they're so good at stealing your iron. So if you have low iron, please consider, you may actually have parasites and that's why. So what are we <laughs> thinking about this? Um, even if you have no gallbladder, you can still do a liver cleanse. People with no gallbladders find them to be extremely supportive. You may actually benefit from extra digestive support and um, you may need longer preparation depending on the severity of your symptoms. You can start in one of our gentler protocol lanes. We actually created in Rapid Liver Reset a very customizable journey so that you're always going at the pace that's right for you. So when in the beginning for me, I was definitely a pink leaner. I was, the, I was that person that could barely tolerate one cap of something. Remember me? I, would, I had like bile and acids like showing up in my mouth. You know, if I leaned over too early in the day, like I could not, I had very low energy, very fragile, easily crashable. So I started gentle because I saw Michael, my partner, doing these like really intense liver protocols because he was trying to cure his mast cell activation syndrome. And he was willing to suffer in that process to try to catch up and try to get his life back. But I couldn't do that without crashing. So he was like over here in the deep healing lane where he was like, deep destagnation, let's go for it. If two of a supplement, four is better, like let's let's try that and i was over here really just easing in one toe in the water at a time so that i could work my way up to what we designed to be the pulse flushes pulse flushes is where the magic happens for so many of us that's how i got out 15,000 stones without ever drinking that olive oil thank goodness 
And um, yes, I did count. I am a Virgo. I kept a tally on my phone. And I actually started counting after that because I had a thought in my head as I was standing over the toilet counting after my latest pulse flush. And I was like, oh, 15,000. I wonder if I can get to 20. And I was like, whoa, no. Cancel, cancel. That's not the message I want to be sending to my body. We don't need to make more just so I can get to a higher number. I just want to get at what's already there. And so that's when I stopped counting. <laughs> but you can be like our Maureen. You can collect them all. You can be like me and keep a tally. It doesn't matter where you start. Um, as long as you are layering in the correct layers of energy, um, support, drainage support, binders, specific types of liver support, you're not going to milk thistle your way out of this. This is not an era where you can just go into an IV clinic, get an glutathione IV, and then crash the next day, wonder why, and then your liver is somehow cured. That is absolutely irresponsible in this day and age. Please don't do that to yourself. And please don't listen to a practitioner who is encouraging that. They have an IV room to fill. That is not systematic enough or thoughtful enough about what your body needs right now. Glutathione is a mobilizer. It's not a binder. So it's basically whomping you out of left field. Hey, can I just overload you real fast with too many toxins for you to deal with? And then you get to deal with the consequences later. So there's also, we do a lot of stone breakers. We, we soften stones and we break them up. And this is all um, natural support. So it's mineral and herbal supports and detox therapies that you can do at home so that you actually have control over the pace at which you're going. And when you do, this is what happens. You get your energy boosted. You release that stuck material in the liver and gallbladder. You also release not just the sluggish bile and the stones, but the stored emotions. Remember how I talked about peeling back that overwhelm and getting back to who you really are? You lower your reactivity of food and supplements. You improve digestion and nutrient absorptions. Hello, fat-soluble vitamins. Yay. Now we're regulating our hormones again. Now we're getting our brain back. Now we're getting our thyroid back. Now we're strengthening our teeth and bones. Now we can look forward to our future. This will empower your immune system. It increases emotional capacity and resilience. Yes, it does support the eradication of those yucky parasites that you have under the surface. And it supports resolution of downstream conditions as you improve bile flow. So your job is to assess your capacity from here. How acute are your symptoms? If they're really acute, if they're like nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, like they really have your attention and your whole life is about managing the intensity of your symptoms, even if you're super motivated, right? Like if you're here, you're clearly extremely motivated to feel better and you're ready to take your health into your own hands. You still want to consider if your symptoms are that acute, your support that you can tolerate may be a low in the beginning, and you may be going low and slow in the gentle healing lane or in the standard dosing lane. Slow and steady wins the race. That's great if you're already there. Or if you've already done liver flushes, if you've already done detox protocols in the past, if you really know your body, you can jump into the deep end and go fast. That's fine. And you'll always see from us all three protocols. What, what are the other guys doing over there in those other lands? So if you want to slow down, or if you want to speed up, you are in total control of that. And that's the whole point, right? You need to design your own detox. That's why we gave you a proven system that's customizable to you so that you can dial in your drainage support, getting your body into a state of flow again. You can dial in your energy support. We would never ask your body to do this work without adding energy in first, we know you have to work full time. We know that you're managing a household, that you might have kids, that you're already dealing with this health project that's compromising your ability to get through your day. Let's be gentle on the body and make sure we're setting it up for success and that this is doable. And then we help you design your detox system support, your binders, your stone breakers, and any replenishing support you need along the way, because it's not just with liver and gallbladder issues. Um, you're not just dealing with overweight stuff. Some people are dealing with being extremely underweight or extremely malnourished. In fact, most of us, I know that when I was overweight, I was actually extremely malnourished as well. I just didn't understand that. And so my body was reacting like it was starving to death because it was, it wasn't getting those fat soluble vitamins and minerals, those um, crucial vitamins getting produced by a healthy gut. I didn't have a healthy gut, so I couldn't get access any of those. So we always do a little bit of replenishing support so that you feel good along the way. And that's what we designed for you. 
a 30-day protocol to provide lasting relief to your liver and gallbladder at a pace that's right for you. That's what Rapid Liver Reset is. So you can alleviate your pain, soothe your gut, reduce food sensitivities, increase your energy, heal those skin conditions, reset metabolism, lift brain fog, and improve sleep quality. That's what our students report. This is their list of what they get. Isn't that amazing? We have cohorts over 95% of people who participate are actually getting these kinds of results. Like that's a really big deal. You know, when you look at a gallbladder removal surgery and 41% of people actually have problems persist and one in five are getting these complications and surgeries versus over 95% success rate. Like this is a really big deal. So I just want to share that the, Thank um, you, Claire. right. You're welcome to come in. We would love to have you. We've even discounted it for you and for your audience today. It is already, so I put, just put the link in, I know a lot of you were like asking me in the Q and A box, like, Hey, how do I do this? So I put the link in the chat right there and Sinclair and her team have automatically put the discount, which you'll see is code Siobhan to get it to you at 797. They do have a payment plan as an option as well. So I'm going to quickly actually just do that and share my screen, Sinclair, if I may. So yeah, of course quickly see this. Um, up, up, there we go. Zoom. And then we're going to get to your questions. You know, I'm very committed to that. Uh, there's pretty Sinclair and <laughs> yes, I want to revive my liver. And this is what she was just talking about. Here are the modules and then some recap there. So it's the seven, it's usually 997. So it's the pay in full 797 or the three payments there. It's just a little, look, she didn't even go cry. I've seen people add five hundred dollars to just do a to do a payment plan. So that might be an option for you. And then when you click it, let's see what happens. The price is seven ninety seven because over here it's taken, I don't know if you can see on the right, um see my name, Siobhan, it's already taken the two hundred dollars off for you. So that's what we're showing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's put some love into the chat for Sinclair because that was a beautiful presentation. I've listened to her many, many times. She is one of our number one most listened to and watched speakers on the five summits she's done with me. Of the 11 I've done, I didn't know her before. I would have had her in the first one. And it's just um, really rewarding to share this information with you. And if you are ready, she is ready. This is the last time she's going to be doing this program this year. And That's we're going to get questions. Okay. Yay. Um, yay. Okay. Oh, I also want to make sure people know what they get with it. So oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So you get your safely dissolve your stones protocol that works for your liver and your gallbladder. If you still have one topicals and suppository guides, how to take pills when you can't take pills, basically liver supportive nutrition, enema formulas. If you need those to help get fast relief and deep healing for a wide range of issues and detox therapies for every level of sensitivity or gallbladder stagnation. And I mean, every level if you have mast cell activation syndrome, if you have Lyme, if you have food allergies, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, if you have colitis or Crohn's, if you have SIBO, this is for you because we made this for people who are actually really struggling with real health issues. And this is how we do it. We give you your choose your own intensity liver flushes, weekly in-depth training from us with short videos that highlight key aspects of each week's focus. So if you have 10 minutes to log in, you can learn something that will change your life. Helpful protocol cheat sheets, easy to scan for brain foggy people, um, very easy to follow, and a private community group where my practitioner team is in there answering your questions. And our grad students are in there cheering you on. You get to lurk and see how they've done it. So you're never alone and you can let the momentum of the cohort carry you forward. And we also created these special bonuses that are only available for the next couple of days. What to do if you don't have a gallbladder guide and how to avoid gallbladder removal. And the third bonus training is how to re reduce reactions during detox. So we have you covered every which way, no matter when you're starting on your journey. And we did give um, reserve just a few of these for Siobhan's audience. Um, mm -hmm. My seasoned practitioners, um, we set aside 10 spots on their calendars for the first 10 people that sign up today to have a solo session just about 
your needs in rapid liver reset. So once you start watching the course material, being able to sit down with them as kind of an integration session of like, okay, here's, here's what I started. Here are my questions. How do I individualize this for me and my health concerns? You can actually get that if you're one of the first 10 people today. Got it. Got it. That's a big deal. Cause I know they were like, you really pushed there. Cause I know they were getting maxed out. So I really, really yes. appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. And Brittany has been helping me because I was like, where are those? Thank you, Brittany. And behind the scenes from your team. It Seriously, this is a decision time for you. And you actually have all the information you need to make this winning decision. And it's, you know, if it's the timing is right for you, I will say that it's never convenient, but it is more convenient now than it will be later. That's just that's, that's what I got to tell you. All right. I am going to get to some questions for you. We have way too many to get to all in our time limitation, but I will do my best. Um, okay. Please do not put them in the chat. I can't look there. I only can look in the Q&A box as, as requested. Um, is there a blood test for fatty liver disease? Is there, say it again, you cut out. Is there a blood test for fatty liver disease or are liver levels what would indicate? fatty liver. So fatty liver disease actually <laughs> is like by process of elimination many times. So if you think about it, first of all, if you're overweight, 75% of people who are overweight have fatty liver disease, just as a, and that that's a really big deal. And over 95%, over 90% of people who are obese have it. Mm -hmm. So if you already have that, just know that. And women who are age 50 to 59 are much greater risk of it um, because there's such an onset of it during menopause. So that's another factor to consider. You know, blood testing doesn't reveal it early enough. Yes, you can reveal it during with blood testing if it's far enough developed. But um, one of the ways you'll discover it is actually through localized pain or getting an ultrasound or an x-ray. So those are the ways that are it's typically discovered because you're in the doctor's office because you've already been suffering with the symptoms of it for quite some time. And fatty liver disease is really important to understand because it will lead to more and more scarring and fibrosis in the liver and developing cirrhosis, which is very scary, honestly. That will really reduce your quality of life. If a gallstone is 1.5 centimeters, is there hope to dissolve it? My doctors say I should get surgery, but I'd rather not. Well, first of all, this is not a substitute for a doctor's visit, okay? And, do and Sinclair, even if you join the program, is not your doctor. So you will need to use your wisdom, your smarts, your communication to make those kinds of important decisions. But there's that. And you saw the pictures and individual results will vary. I mean, I can't disclaim it any more than that. So did you want to make a comment about that? I think you covered all the bases. We okay. have people who join with stones that large or larger all the time, getting wonderful results, but it is a personal journey. And we want you to proceed at the pace that's right and safe for you. But yeah, that would absolutely have my full attention. And I would recommend that you take direct action. Yeah. If you're sensitive, how long will it take for you to reach the point where you release stones? Everybody is different. Your own individual snowflake and organs. I totally get why you're asking these very specific questions. I really, really do. But you said something Sinclair about the Marine doing the 30 day prep, and then he had those show up. So do you want to just talk about generally a timeline generally? Yeah. So, um, this really comes down to your own capacity. So what we always do is teach you the factors that speed this up and the factors that slow it down. And the good news is you're in control of all of those. And we have people who can get into this and start releasing and volunteering stones within a couple of weeks that are sensitive and people who um, have to go really low and slow. And it may be up to like four months if you are extremely sensitive and you're playing it really safe and that's totally up to you, but that's a very typical range. Um, I will say that people who are sensitive are surprised at the results that they see as fast as they see them. But I, I really want you to be respectful of your body. We always want this to go as fast as possible. You know, I wanted it to go really fast, but if you're making progress in the right direction, it's okay to just respect your body's pace. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's no prizes for going too fast. That's how you create Herx reactions. 
That's right. how you create unnecessary suffering for yourself. Um, have you found MCAS to be resolved by lack of liver and gallbladder function? Have you found MCAS? I think yes. maybe it's, have you found MCAS to be resolved when your liver and gallbladder are doing well? Yeah, I think that's what they're saying. Um, so yeah, what we see is MCAS reduce in severity and even resolve as you support your liver and gallbladder. You may also need to tackle gut parasites as well as part of that. But you definitely, uh, I don't see mast cell people resolving mast cell activation syndrome without tackling liver and gallbladder stagnation issues. Yeah. If someone's on cholesterol medicine, potentially at risk for impaired bile formation. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you're trying to control your cholesterol through medication, then mm -hmm. yeah, that, that could absolutely be a factor in um, sluggish bile. That's, that's the heck of it. It's, it's a frustrating conundrum, but the good news is people come in to this program and this proven system on medication all the time. And they're actually able to get off it over time because they did the work. So that's, that's how I would invite you to consider it. I don't want to comment any more specifically on medications yeah, because no, I would never course. get in between you and your doctor. And do you have to go through your poop? Is that part? You don't have to go through your poop, everybody. You no, you don't. You don't have to. No. And then you might be so hardcore and you don't ever have to touch it with your hand or anything. But that is, it's not like, okay, show us your stones. Let's see. What <laughs> it's adorable. But I will tell you, people become toilet detectives that are quite de genteel and well mannered in polite society. And I have little old ladies coming through the toilet with a ruler and gloves because they need to know, is it working? And so you may become one of those. You okay. don't know. You, it's, it's amazing the things we end up doing. Is it achieved through supplements or other things? What are the preparations and what are the risks? Do the flukes come out alive and moving? Okay. A bunch of <laughs> That's things. a great question. Yeah. No, I, I've never seen a fluke come out alive and moving. Actually, there were a, a couple Not of usually. of it. Okay. Not, it's very, very rare. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they do spontaneously evacuate sometimes. Like sometimes they'll go to the bathroom and it's just a fluke coming out. Like, I don't want to be here anymore. You've made this no longer a good place for me. I got to go. <laughs> Can stones get caught or stuck in the bile ducts? Can't tolerate cell core products. What else do you offer? Yeah, it's a great question. So, um, there's a couple questions embedded in this. So can stones get caught in the bile ducts? Is that physically possible? Potentially. I've taken over 10,000 people through this and it hasn't happened though. Mm. So I just invite you to consider that because we're extremely systematic about the prep work. So I don't know if you heard that part, but supporting you from the cellular level on up and destagnation and breaking up the stones ahead of time. And your your bile ducts are actually magical. They can dilate to a, a, like a sub, like a, by a substantial amount just to release scary stuff. So if you do the right work, um, this can be done very, very safely. And remember, there's the pink lane for you. When in doubt, start in the gentle healing lane. That's a no flush flush. It's a non-event. You're just chipping away at this very gently. Um, I don't tolerate glutathione. Glutathione. Is that necessary to do no, it? It's not. And there's a reason why you don't. You're that's trying to push your liver too fast. Your liver should be in charge of making your glutathione. You don't tolerate glutathione because it's acting as a mobilizer and not a binder. So you're mobilizing junk like toxins in the body and your liver can't keep up. That's why we don't include glutathione. Can you do this detox and detox if you're constipated all the time? Hi, Abby. Oh, that's a great question. So I would say the majority of people that come into rapid liver reset are constipated. So we always provide non-habit forming bowel support of various kinds because you're going to find your own Goldilocks formula and that's going to support you to finally release for the liver. You don't want to push liver release unless you have the doors to the exit open, which is your bowels. So we have a lesson in there about chronic, you know, persistent constipation and lesser known strategies to deal with that. Everything we do is non-habit forming. So you won't get stuck on something for life. Um, there's absolutely a way to do this. And that's a very typical question. Okay. If you have green stool and a foul odor, you definitely need to investigate this. Yeah. Um, 
she's not doing this again this year. We're, we're running out of time, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. I do want to encourage you to do this at the special price. I'm so glad you were here today. You know, you're getting those extra special bonuses. I think you can tell Sinclair knows what she's doing and is very careful and very sensitive and very thoughtful. The first 10 people, and I know we're, we're getting close to the end of that, um, are going to be able to do a touch base with her seasoned practitioners to start to kind of like, just, you know, get a lay of the land. You don't need that. So if you sign up after the first 10, that's okay. You're still in great shape. I know hundreds of people have already signed up and this is getting, um, the, the bucket is getting full. So she just snuck me in today and snuck in those last 10. So yeah. I want to encourage you to, if this is appealing to you, to go click that link, decide for yourself. I know it's a big decision, but isn't it time? Isn't it? I, I think it's past time. Like I would be like, let, let, let's all join and be relieved, no, no pun intended, about what the possibilities are. And by the way, she has about a thousand FAQs in the program. So all of your wonderful questions that I wish you could we could get to today. We're not going to be able to, um, they get answered. Plus Sinclair, talk to me about like the format of like, what's, what's it like just, to, I know, but could you explain it? Like what the program is like? Yeah. The live versus the, you know, Q and a in the community, you know that. Yeah. Yeah. So every week, little short videos unlock for you that help dis you discover like the core concepts for that week. Every week has a layer to the protocol that you gently add in the next step for the right lane for you. You get a live Q and a with me and my team. You also have the forum going 24 seven grad students are in there. Your peers are with you. We're cheering each other on. We're handing out prizes in the forum. You know, my practitioners, I have five practitioners answering your questions in there. That's why I cap um, rapid liver reset and why it sells out every year, because yes, it's DIY, but we want to make sure that you feel included and supported and held in a really solid container of practitioner support. So that's really crucial. And like you said, there's over a thousand FAQs. So that's like instant access. Chances are, if you have a question, it's already been asked and answered, and it's easy to find the answer. Okay. What is the customer service email? Just in case someone has a question that is, you know, logistical in nature, if you don't yeah. mind. It's support at detoxrejuvenation.com. There's also FAQs answered on the um, yes. sales page for you too. So it's important to understand is it's okay. If you can't make the live events, it's great if you can, because then you can get carried by the momentum of the cohort and we're cheering you on and it's fun. We're laughing together. We're answering questions, um, but you can always just catch the replays and you do have lifetime access to this. So Ooh. you can really take your time. Yeah. That's new this year. That is new this year. That is new. So in the past it was a limited time. So that's great. Sinclair. I really appreciate that. You're getting the bonuses of the food filters guide, which is to help you decide what to eat, choose your lane, live Q&A. That's awesome. What to do if you don't have a gallbladder. These are bonuses, how to avoid gallbladder removal and how to reduce reactions during detox. So those are very special. They're not always included. And I really, I don't think I can say anything else right now that's going to make you decide. I think this is an internal decision yeah, that you need to really, you know, go inside, see if you can pull it off. And if you're ready, they're ready. So namaste, everyone. Thank you, Sinclair. Let's put some love into the oh, chat wow. for Sinclair and her team. Thanks, Brittany and, and co. She does have the customer service um, support there. She's not, don't email that question and go like, I don't know, uh, ask a medical question because that's not going to work. That won't be appropriate. But mm -hmm. so, and Rev Michelle's health, I can't say, I'm going to say this for Sinclair. She can't tell you that it's going to totally clear up your fatty liver because everyone's fatty liver is different. However, you've got these systems in place to support and clear. And the point is rapid liver reset. So, yeah. all right. I just want you guys to know, you can totally do this. You are more than capable because I was a giant wuss and crashed easily, always looking for a shortcut and a Band-Aid. And I still tackled this head on and made it happen. So I know if I can do it, you can do it. And the problem doesn't get smaller until you face it. So I hope that you feel empowered today from our training. I hope that you feel encouraged. I hope you remember that your body is absolutely brilliant. It's never too late to fix this. We get students in their 70s and 80s having amazing progress in rapid liver reset every single cohort. 
So let's get this done. It's just a project. Let's get it done. And thanks to Melanie and Cindy and Tanya. Lots of great people are, are coming on in. You're all great. Don't get me wrong, but I'm excited for you all. It's actually too many to list right now. Okay, Sinclair, I'm going to text you and thank you all so much. And we will send this replay out later, but be sure to take advantage of it while we can get it to you. Okay, bye. Thanks.